Last week's trip to Universal Studios Hollywood in California put us right in the middle of the opening week of their new Super Nintendo World. And while we had a blast that day, so much of it was because of the other rides and activities all around the park. This theme park is not known for being little kid friendly, so I'm going to tell you about what rides work with kiddos and give you tips to make your day at Universal Hollywood a success. But not that. Never the Simpsons ride. First, let's go to the lower lot. The park is literally cut into two sections, and to get down here, you have to take a series of very long escalators. Down in the lower lot are most of the grown-up rides like Jurassic World, Revenge of the Mummy, and Transformers The Ride 3D, plus that whole new Super Nintendo area. You can see all about our Super Nintendo World time in this other video, but as far as the rest of the lower lot, Mm, it's simply not kid friendly. So this video is going to stick to the upper lot primarily and you probably should too. First off, a few tips. On the map you'll find a first aid center, but here you'll see the signage says family center. This is located right by French Street Bistro. And when we went by they weren't open yet, but I just needed a diaper change for my toddler so we went to the restrooms right there. But if you need somewhere to feed a baby, that's the place. And there's a second first aid center in the lower lot by Jurassic Cafe. They also have stroller rentals available, singles and doubles, at the front of the park, but we deliberately brought our travel stroller to fold up on the escalators. Let's talk character interactions. We saw so many fun characters all around the park, and at most we had to wait maybe five minutes to take our turn for a photo, but often they were just hanging out and you'd encounter them around the streets of Universal. Everything from minions and trolls to classic movie characters and just some New Yorkers hanging out their windows. <laughs> the only exception was the characters down in Super Nintendo World that had quite a long line to get a photo. But most of these moments were everywhere and they were a lot of fun and you didn't have to carve out a lot of time for them. But what about rides? Our first ride of the day was the studio tour, and I think knocking it out in the morning is a great idea because it's a solid 45 minute long tram ride and the waits can get long later in the day. I highly recommend this attraction as it's one of the few working studios you can tour and see how movie magic is made. However, we did discuss this ride a lot with our kids before the trip. We talked about how movies use special effects, and I told them about some of the scary moments, and we discussed the films that they represented, like Jaws and King Kong. The tram does go through some frightening and loud sections where you experience a flood and an earthquake. Woo! Our flash flood, the oldest attraction still on our tour. That goes back to 1968. And then they give you some 3D glasses for the King Kong and Fast and the Furious portions of the ride. Honestly, my two and a half year old was pretty nervous and hid his face during that part. So judge for yourself if your kids can handle it. Next, we went totally kid friendly with The Secret Life of Pets Off the Leash. This ride sometimes utilizes a virtual queue later in the day. So just check your app to make sure it's standby and not virtual. The height requirement is 34 inches. And this queue is such a fun interactive space. There are screens, sets, and so many fantastic animatronics. It's seriously like you're on the ride from the minute you get in line. The ride itself is a pretty good dark ride and all my kids gave it a big ol' thumbs up. Don't skip this one. And later in the day, Nick took the big kids on Despicable Me Minion Mayhem, a sort of simulator show slash ride with a high requirement of 40 inches. So think about screens with seats that move around. Here are the kids having a dance party in the final room as you exit into the gift shop, where we bought our favorite souvenir, a pressed penny. And while they rode, I took our littlest to explore the Super Silly Funland. It's a Despicable Me-themed carnival area right next to the ride. They have a splash pad there, as well as the Silly Swirly Fun Ride. It's this easy flying around ride with no height requirement. But Axum preferred the playground area. I hear there's also a playground area down by the Jurassic World section called Dino Play. If I were waiting out a rider swap down in the lower lot, that is where I'd go. 
Later, Nick took Axon to the Kung Fu Panda Adventure, which is a sort of 4D movie where the seats tilt and move, and to be honest, they weren't very excited about that one. If your child's too small, they'll be assigned a stationary seat, but our toddler was big enough to sit in the normal seats just fine. It's kid-friendly, it's just not super exciting. Sorry, I don't have any footage of that. In general, we only picked rides that at least the two biggest kids could ride, but the exception was Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey. Nick took our eight-year-old since the height requirement is 48 inches and the line was super short. So while Nora was waiting, she got to meet the students from Bobaton. Asher said the ride was awesome and he recommends it highly for any eight-year-olds out there. Note that they do offer a rider swap option if you want to go on a ride that has a height requirement and can't accommodate some of your little ones. I'll show you how rider swap works in the Super Nintendo World video when we ride Mario Kart Bowser's Challenge, so check that out. If you do utilize a rider swap, consider leaving your belongings with the adult that stays behind, because Forbidden Journey, like many of the other big rides at Universal, require you to leave your items in a locker. And it's not a big hassle, but you could skip that step if you wanted to. Since the 500 travelers are all about traveling with kids with dietary restrictions, we need to talk about food. So let me share what we ate, gluten, dairy, and soy free. We started off the morning just past the entrance at Starbucks, like any other red-blooded American parent. Hooray for oat milk chais. It was a lovely store. Then, knowing that snacks were scarce in Super Nintendo World, we got popcorn before our time to enter the new land to keep everyone happy and full. Huh. So for the popcorn, we wanted to double check and make sure that it didn't have butter in it yeah, or something like it. that. And they showed us that it is an Orville Redenbacher all-in-one with coconut oil, and there are some natural flavors, but it should be gluten and dairy-free. So we're having popcorn. <laughs> For a late lunch after our time in Super Nintendo World, we headed out to Mel's Diner, which I knew had one of the few dedicated gluten-free fryers in the park, and we were eager for some french fries. We also ordered Beyond Burgers on gluten-free buns, and these were cheeseburgers with what I'm 99% sure was a BioLife dairy-free cheese slice, and that's my kid's favorite. Not too shabby. For an afternoon treat, we headed to Hogshead Tavern in Hogsmeade for pumpkin juice. What do you think? What do you think? It's like my vitamins and delicious horses. Oh. What did you think? I think it's pretty good, actually. <laughs> what? What? Did it taste like that? Yeah, your face different. I think it tastes like you get kicked in the face by a jack-o'-lantern. <laughs> I, I think I probably like it most out of anybody here in our party. I get pumpkin, I get apricot, I get honey, uh, lots of cinnamon, clove, nutmeg, spices. It's actually pretty good. I don't know why people would just like it. I just want to high five the bartenders at Hogshead because when I asked if they had any allergen information on this, they didn't have it readily available, but they went hunting. And even after I placed my order and left, they chased me down with a screenshot of what they could find to make sure I felt confident about drinking it. So I already felt pretty confident because I had read the ingredient list from the bottled version of the pumpkin juice and I thought it was the same. So I was pretty confident it was gonna be good, but um, yeah, it, it has some juices and purees and a few extra things that are soda-y, but not anything gluten, dairy, or um, from what I could find, food dyes. So I think we're good. And for dinner, we headed back into Super Nintendo World for Toadstool Cafe. But that is a full video that you can find over here. We had really managed our expectations of what we thought this day would be, since we had been told repeatedly that it's really a big kid park and that our little ones would be bored. But there were plenty of attractions and characters to fill our day, and we were really impressed with the quality and the theming of the offerings there. My kids are already asking when we can go back. Who wants to break it to them that it's all the way on the other coast? We had a blast and the kids were worn out. Be sure to check out all three of the videos on the Universal Hollywood playlist and stay tuned for more from our time in California. We'll see you next time, travelers.